Okay, what is going on everyone? I'm DSP and welcome to the very first live streaming Ask the King, the first one where I'm actually using my webcam and I'm doing a live stream on Twitch TV, but also archiving this for the King of Hate vlogs on YouTube. Now I want to let everyone know that the way this is going to work is I'm going to be doing this in half hour increments. So for example, right now I'm about to start my timer and after a half hour I'm going to take a break on the stream but I'm going to split the video so that way just like always you can watch Ask the King in half hour increments on YouTube. I know a lot of people have issues when these episodes go super long like I did with my podcast last week. Um, so how is this going to work? Well basically for those of you who are new maybe there's some people on the stream or watching this for the first time and don't know anything about this series so it's a good opportunity for me to explain to you exactly what the series is and how it works. Ask the King is basically a fan mail series, a Q&A session between my viewers and myself, where you can submit questions, I review all the questions, and I actually answer them in this series once a month. And usually, it's the last Thursday of the month that I do it. So, what we're going to be doing is taking a variety of questions from three places. From my forums, that's what these are from, from Twitter, and also from Facebook. So, we've got a, three different avenues via which you can... Uh, submit questions. I've gone through all of them this afternoon and I've picked the best ones that I think will be more entertaining as answers. Um, in addition, since this is the very first live stream of Ask the King, um, I am actually also going to be doing questions from the stream chat. I'm pointing right now to my laptop, which right now we have about 600, wow, 673 people and growing in the stream chat right now who are all submitting questions. Uh, and what I'm going to do, it's actually a raffle-based system where everyone just submits questions to a raffle. When I'm done answering all these, I'm going to go to the stream chat and I'm going to randomly select questions. And we're going to see <clears throat> what gets selected. And, uh, and I'm going to answer those live here in, in the episode. So I actually think that some people aren't submitting their questions properly, which is pretty funny. Um, people are putting their questions in brackets when you don't have to. I, I guess the, the, the template shows a bracket but you don't need to put a bracket when you submit your question if you're watching this live you don't have to do that you just put i think exclamation point raffle and then your question and then that's it just so everybody knows um all right so we are about to start let's jump in because i've got a lot of good questions i do want to say this month the questions were really really good oh by the way it is may 30th 2013 i forgot to say that so this is the may edition i believe this is episode 33 of ask the king so that's pretty crazy. 33 episodes of this show spanning, I believe now, it's been going over two years. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm almost positive that Ask the King's been running for over two years now. So pretty damn good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's get started with these questions for my forums. The first question, um, this is from KH Knight, and he asks, Having considered using Skype during a live stream, Oh, he, he spelled it wrong. Have you considered using Skype during a live stream to have fans call you and talk to you live and have their questions answered? This could be kind of like a live version of Ask the King, and I think it could end up being more popular than your current way of doing Ask the King. Some people may not like having to type a question on your website and wait a month for it to be answered if, if you even decide to answer it. Maybe some people would rather have their questions answered as they, as they ask them to you. Gee, it seems to me like I may be doing something very similar to what this guy's asking. Now, his particular question is, will I ever have an episode where I do Skype? The answer there is no. I will never do Skype with Ask the King, and the reason is because Skype is flaky. You could have people who have horrible connections and you can't understand them. You could have people with super high volume, super low volume, and trying to put together a live stream with Skype is, could be a nightmare. I know personally because I talked to John Rambo about it, and he told me it is a nightmare. So I wouldn't do that, but what I'm doing, as you can see, the interactivity with the raffle is going to work a hell of a lot better than uh, using Skype. Now, the other half of the question <clears throat> was, well, what he said was, some people may not like having to type a question on your website and wait a month for it to be answered. Now that is true, but here's what you have to understand. Right now we're live streaming the show. It's got 713 viewers and growing. 713 people could potentially be submitting questions. I can't answer them all. So what I have to do with the live stream is do a raffle system where everyone submits their question into a raffle and I just randomly draw and decide whether or not those are the questions I want to answer. So when you submit your question on the forums, okay, 
I actually personally review every question that's posted in the forum. So you have a much higher chance of getting your question answered if you post it in the forum or Twitter and Facebook than you do if you just wait for the live stream and submit it. I mean, it's cool that, that these people are here and they're being, you know, interacting with me live, but you're going to have a much higher chance if you actually put it up ahead of time and I have ch a chance to review every question. So if you want to get your question answered, post it on the forums. That's probably your best bet. Okay, next question. <clears throat> oh, by the way, you may be hearing my uh, air conditioner. That's what the ambient noise is. It is extremely hot and humid here in Connecticut today. It's the first day. It's 85 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's extreme humidity. It feels like it's Florida outside. So that's why my air conditioner is, air conditioner is pumping, and you can probably hear it on the mic. I apologize for that. Okay, um, next question. Hey, Phil, uh, are you going to do another DSP Tries It with a guest, such as Panda Lee or John Rambo? I was very entertained with your DSP tries it with guests, but the last uh, <clears throat> the last DSP tries it featuring John Rambo as the cameraman was the KFC Double Down, which was ages ago. Will you in the near future have guests on DSP tries it? And that's from Filipino Gamer. Yes, in fact, the very next episode of DSP tries it will have a special guest John Rambo. So it was it was so weird that he asked this question with this timing that I have the next episode done and it actually has John Rambo in it. And it is going to be a food item. The two of us are tr trying a new food item that we were both so, like, quizzically intrigued that this thing even existed. That we were like, what the fuck could it be? And you're going to see in the next episode of DSP Tries It what that is. When will that be released? It's probably going to be released, I'm thinking now, probably Monday. Because I'm pretty booked today with Ask the King. Tomorrow there's going to be a Hateful Truth. Saturday will be Smart Guys. And Sunday's going to be the, the Week in Preview. So I'm booked until Monday. So Monday you'll probably see the new DSP Tries It. <clears throat> Okay, next question. Uh, hey, Phil, what are your opinions on games like Bioshock Infinite and Red Dead Redemption, just to name a couple examples, that have better stories, better storytelling, and better characters than most films, that get, but they don't get the mainstream attention like films do? When do you think games will be among music and film and being considered real entertainment? Games are still viewed as childish and unimportant among the mainstream media. The only games that aren't uh, things like Journey... There aren't even real games in my opinion. Well, I disagree there. Journey is a game, but I'm pretty sure that if a film critic played a game like Bioshock Infinite or even the Mass Effect series, they'd be blown away at how good the stories are and would consider video games as real entertainment. Games are already on the same level as films and music in quality. All it takes is for people to just play one of these games and they'd realize it. Liked, I'd like to know your thoughts on this matter and thanks for reading. That's from Bleary Line 7. Now, this is an interesting question <clears throat> for multiple reasons, but... My opinion on the subject is this. It's not that games aren't viewed as real entertainment. They are. A lot of people know. Games are great entertainment. They're a lot of fun. But I think that's where the misconception is. People say, oh, games are only meant to be a little side amusement. It's not like a serious thing that you would dedicate a lot of time to. It's not something that could be regarded as, oh, I would play it and review it, okay? A lot of people just think it's a kiddie thing. It really still, I mean, even though you've got Call of Duty that's bringing in more money than any motion picture yearly... People still view games as a kid thing, and if you play games a lot, people still kind of view you as a kid thing. What's actually breaking into the mainstream more are mobile gaming, okay? These are games that really don't have great arcing stories and amazing writing like Red Dead Redemption or Mass Effect, as he references in, in this question, but they're just things that you could play for five seconds, oh, 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 and then it's done, and that's becoming way more mainstream because of that, just like the Wii. The Nintendo Wii, you jumped into it, you waved your arms around like an asshole for five minutes, it was done, you put it down like a kid's toy. And that's why mobile gaming is really breaking out. People are seeing it like a kid's toy. They're not taking gaming seriously. The real issue isn't that it's not viewed as entertainment. The issue is it's not viewed as art, okay? Because let's face it, why is a, a motion picture made? For entertainment purposes, to entertain the viewer. But it's also held in this high artsy regard as, oh, it's a work of art. It needs to be protected it needs to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that people review it and, that, oh, I appreciate the, the artistry of this, this actor or this writer or this director and the artistic duration of the film. You don't see those kind of references when it comes to video games. And it's funny because when you look at the mainstream media who are part of the mainstream gaming media, even them, they're not professionals. They play a game and all of a sudden they, they'll rate it some retarded fucking rating with no basis to really do that. They'll, they'll have these biased, stupid opinions because they don't take it seriously. That's the bottom line is that gaming is not taken seriously or regarded as a work of art. I really feel that gaming, video games in particular, 
It's an interactive art form. It is a unique art form. It is nothing like anything else. It's not like music or movies because you actually participate in creating the work of art. Yes, the game developers lay the groundwork. They put the lines of code in. They, they develop the, the graphical models and the gameplay. But it's up to you to contribute something to create this final work of art. <clears throat> And I really feel that, unfortunately, number one, video games aren't treated fairly when it comes to being regarded as a work of art. Number two, they're not reviewed fairly when it comes to that regard because the mainstream gaming media isn't serious media. And number three, <clears throat> the actual laws regarding copyright surrounding video games are draconian and incorrect because video games are not just a, a singular thing. They are completely different for different people. One person can play a game, and it's completely different than when another person plays the game because of their interactive input, their experience, their skill level. And so games are just a new entity. So it's, it's, no, it's no surprise that when you get amazing games like Red Dead Redemption, when you get games like Mass Effect, where they are unique and, and interesting and they're interactive works of art, that the mainstream doesn't get it because it's they, you're absolutely right they haven't been exposed to these games they haven't been explained to you that this is look how much work was put into it we got the same amount of people voice acting the same amount of people working on the, the 3d models as would work on a major motion picture we've got the same high caliber writers writing the scripts of these games and it's going to be a hurdle that needs to be climbed okay but ultimately Hopefully in time, games will be regarded as works of art and as interactive works of art that are completely different than film and movies and will have all these stupid copyright laws that are just outdated and don't fit the form of what a video game is so that people can eventually do Let's Plays and have interactive performances of gaming that aren't, oh no, that's a copyright infringement. Flag that and shut down that stream and this and that. It's complete bullshit and hopefully in time people will get it. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> hold on a second, I want to check my time. Okay. Uh, hey Phil, I'd like to hear your opinion on racing games and the genre and overall its, its overall success. I find it interesting that even though it doesn't appeal to a very wide audience, except for games like Mario Kart, it manages to sell lots of copies. Just look at Need for Speed, which sold 100 to 125 million copies the last time around, the Gran Turismo series, which is one of, if not Sony's flagship series, and the best-selling game both on the PS1 and on the PS3, actually came in second on the PS2 and PSP, and it's a system seller, and of course, more recently, Forza, which is also getting a lot of success. I'd like to hear your opinion. Cheers. And that's from XDevil7675. Well, very interesting question. The bottom line is, when it comes to me and my personal experiences with racing games, I am not a car person. So right up front, you can understand, if I'm not a car person, I'm probably not the kind of person who's so into racing and, oh, you know, I'm, I'm oh, look at the detail on that car. And, oh, wow, this is this model car, and I know that this car is better for this race, and therefore I'll do better with this car in this race. I know nothing about cars, okay? I'm not a car guy. I never was. I don't understand people who are car guys. Now, it's a hobby. I'm sure that there's some people who they're really into it, and that's fine. You can be really into a hobby. So <clears throat> for me... I've never been that into racing games simply because I'm not that into racing or cars. That doesn't mean that I don't occasionally enjoy a good racing game. I remember back in the day in arcades, the biggest thing was like Outrunners, um, Daytona USA. I still remember in arcade, Daytona, let's go away, let's go away. Yeah, that's the theme song from the game. It was iconic. You'd walk into an arcade and you would hear it, Daytona. And you'd say, ah, oh, they got Daytona USA. And you'd run over and play it because the game was so good. Um... But over the years, racing games have kind of split. You've got the arcade style racer, which is lax controls. It's more about fun and casual play versus the more simulation style racer, which is more realistic, more realistic graphics, more realistic handling controls. Maybe it has a wide variety of realistic cars. And I, for the most part, when it comes to racing games, have veered towards the arcade. I like the arcade. I'm the kind of person I play games for fun, not necessarily for like competition to say that I'm the best at something. And so for me, just looking for quick fun, it's a lot easier to jump into the arcade style of game and learn the controls and learn that versus going into the simulation, which is a lot harder. You need more time, more dedication, and probably product knowledge. You probably need to know things about the cars. Like I know that that car is better for this type of race. I know this car is better for drifting and this and that. I don't know that, so those games innately are going to be harder for me. Now. 
just like any hobby, just like any sport, of course, racing is going to be popular as long as it has a mainstream appeal, which it does outside of video games. That's going to convert well into video games. So I am not surprised whatsoever that video games over racing have done uh, successfully. Uh, what I want to say is a perfect example here is right now I'm actually playing, if I can grab it here, Grid 2. It's a current playthrough that I'm doing on, on uh, live stream and also on YouTube on DSP Gaming, my gaming channel. And this game is a lot more like a simulation where it's harder to control the cars. You need to have knowledge of the cars to know which one's better for each race. And I don't have any of that. So at this point, I'm struggling a little bit with the game. I'm really enjoying it in that sense of accomplishment when you finally beat something that's really hard. You get that. But at the same time, like I said, I'm the kind of person who really is about having the casual kind of fun rather than really dedicating yourself and feeling accomplishment after challenging a hard task in a video game. So for me, it's hit or miss. I enjoy this game. I understand why it could be popular. But for me, this isn't like the ulti penultimate racing. For me, I would rather enjoy a game more like, uh, for example, Motorstorm Apocalypse last year or Mario Kart or that style of racing is more catered towards what I like. But I completely understand why a more simulation style game does appeal to a wider audience. Okay. All right, still got good time, so let's keep going. Um, next question uh, from H-Run. He says, what's up, man? Uh, I was wondering, what is your favorite Godzilla movie and which Godzilla movie you hated the most because you talked about him on your previous Ask the King? I wanted to know this because I am a huge Godzilla fan. Well, that is a, quite an interesting question um, because Godzilla has really just... He's been through the ringer. He's been... For a long time, he was the same kind of style of movie. And then all of a sudden, like in the past 20 years, they decided to reboot and reboot and reboot. And I have some feelings on the subject. First of all, Godzilla. Big, giant rubber suit. Big, giant puppet. You know what I mean? That's the classic Godzilla. That's the Godzilla that everyone knows and loves. And even in this day and age, even if you're, you're a kid and you've seen all the CGI and shit up your ass... If you watch the classic Godzilla movies, you kind of get it. You're like, that's pretty cool. Giant monsters in Japan fighting, destroying these these sets. And yes, the movies are campy as hell. Outside of the monster fights, the stories with the humans are so fucking boring and stupid, but it's done on purpose because that's like a genre of movie. This B-series monster flick with giant robots and giant rubber monsters. So I've watched the classic Godzilla movies. Out of all of those, I, be I believe Godzilla vs. Biollante was really good. I'm trying to remember some of the ones that I saw. Um, any of the ones with King Ghidorah are great. King Ghidorah is the three-headed uh, monster that has no arms but wings, and he's pretty. he's been through the ringer, too. He's been Mecha Ghidorah, and he ripped off his head so he had robotic heads, and then he became Super Duper Ghidorah, and all these crazy things. Space, I think they had Space Godzilla and Space Ghidorah, some crazy shit. But uh, if you want to know my favorite Godzilla movie of all time, you may be surprised. It's actually the most recent one. It's called Godzilla Final Wars. This was a movie that was made by a Japanese director, and it is so different from other Godzilla movies. What it does, it has Godzilla as a giant ro rubber suit, okay? But it uses modern technology. I believe it was made in, like, 2006, I want to say, or 2007. It uses modern filmmaking and technology to make it look hyper-realistic, and it actually allows these monsters for the first time to move fast. So instead of having, oh, the slow, lumbering Godzilla, and then he goes, bleh, and spits the fire. No, Godzilla's moving fast, and there's actually real combat and, like, real-time martial arts and stuff in this movie. You've got, uh, <clears throat> I forget his name. He's the, uh, the guy who's supposed to be, like, an Ankylosaurus. He's, like, fl in, a, in a ball bouncing around, like, Blanca, and he's doing ball high-speed ball attacks and stuff. The movie is insane, and I really like it because it has basically surprise guest appearances by all of the giant movie monsters that were ever in a Japanese movie. They all show up. Mothra, uh, 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 Rodan, um, all of them are in it, and it's really neat. And the thing that I actually didn't like about the movie, once again, I'll say it again, the human portion. The human portion sucked. They tried to make the human portion like a Matrix ripoff where people were all doing, they were aliens, so they're doing crazy kung fu and, and they have superhuman abilities. I don't think anyone really give a shit about the human portion, but... I really did like the live-action portion of that movie and the cinematography put into it. <clears throat> My least favorite Godzilla movie is by far probably voted by everyone around the world the worst Godzilla movie ever made. 
This is the American Godzilla movie that was made, I think it was like 1998 or something like that, which Godzilla was completely CGI. It took place in New York City. The plot was convoluted, had some of the worst writing ever made, including Matthew Broderick as the, the main guy. I mean, Matthew Broderick is the leading role in Godzilla. What the fuck were they thinking, man? That movie was terrible, okay? But people went to see it because they advertised it well. The marketing campaign was genius, and it was amazing CGI. Like, for the time, that was groundbreaking. And then two years later, the uh, technology advanced, and now Godzilla looks like shit in that movie, so no one will ever watch it again. But it was actually funny because in the Godzilla Final Wars movie that I just referenced as my favorite one, they brought back the CGI Godzilla from that movie. In that movie, they just called him Zilla, and... Uh, the real Godzilla just, like, whoops his fucking ass. Like, kills him in, like, two seconds. It's fucking hilarious, and it's great. If you've seen both movies, you're like, yes, he fucking killed that piece of shit. Yes, now we can forget that sh shitty fucking movie was ever made, and we can write it off as if it was never made. So, <laughs> that's my opinion on Godzilla. And I actually heard that they're actually supposedly making a new Godzilla movie, which blows my mind. They're making a new Godzilla movie. <clears throat> I can't wait to see what they do with the franchise. <clears throat> We got eight minutes left, so I can probably answer one more question before we uh, we break here. So the, this question, all right, and this is oh boy, I don't know if I can answer this one in eight minutes. This is a doozy. Um, <clears throat> you know what? We're gonna skip it, and this is gonna be the first question for the next part because I don't know if I can answer this one in eight minutes. Okay. So the next question is, hey Phil, since you started streaming on Twitch, have you heard of any news on getting a subscription button? I really love your content, and I would really like to support you. And his name is. Latith. Um, well, Latith, I actually addressed this a, a few weeks ago to a month ago because I did ask Twitch about it. Once I, I saw that, wow, my Twitch presence is really growing. In fact, right now, I've, I've been streaming for just under three months now. I've got almost 8,000 people who have liked my, my channel. They're basically subscribed to the channel and almost a million views. That's pretty crazy for Twitch. Like A lot of people don't get that kind of popularity on Twitch, especially because I'm not playing Dota 2, StarCraft 2, uh, Call of Duty, the games that are big on Twitch, that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing completely different content. I think people are, are they think it's a breath of fresh air that someone like myself is on Twitch, okay? So, I did actually look into the subscription button. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's actually a button that says subscribe that would show up on my channel. Now, you would click that and then you would basically pay a monthly fee. So maybe it's five bucks. I don't know what it is because I don't have a subscription, okay? It's not a, 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 an option on my channel. And you would subscribe to me and pay a monthly fee. Now, you would get the same content, but the difference is you would get a, a second chat, which supposedly from what people are saying, it's like a better chat. I don't understand the difference there. But basically what you're doing, it's a monthly donation to me to support me and say, I like what you're doing. Here's a little bit of money. So that way, by the way, if you do that, you don't get ads. So you wouldn't have to ever watch the ads during the commercial breaks that I run. Um, and I looked into it. I said, gee, if people want to willingly do that for, for me here on Twitch, I'll do it. I'm not like the other streamers on Twitch who sit here and beg for donations every half hour. Oh, please, please send me money via PayPal. Please, please, please. No. I'm the kind of person who I believe that I'm going to earn your money. Okay? I'm going to make a living earning it, not begging so if you're watching the content and you watch the ads, you know, I get a little bit of something out of it. But also if you were to subscribe, I would have gotten something out of it. And that, of course, that's a willing thing that you would do. By no means would I ever make my content required pay to see. A lot of people have asked me about the new subscription thing on YouTube. They said, oh, there's this new feature where on YouTube you can make your channel, uh, uh, you know, you have to pay to see. I would never do that because that's not the premise of what I do. The premise is I provide free and entertaining content. You watch it. You watch the ads and or, you know, you can subscribe if this ever comes about, and then that's how I make out from it, okay? Um, so I talked to Twitch about it, and Twitch said, basically, right now the subscription uh, program is under review. And what they mean by that is they don't, they're not sure they want to progress with it the way that it works currently. And I don't know if that's because maybe they, they realize they're not making enough money on it, or maybe there's, I don't know, I don't know. But they said they're not letting anyone have a, a, a new subscription uh, option at all. 
like for this whole year, no one's been able to, to get the subscription option. They, they shut it down at some point. And they said that at a future time, they are going to probably re-enable it, but the program might be different. And at that time, that I'll be eligible to, to submit and possibly get in there in that pool of people. But So I thank you, Latif, for wanting to uh, support me. <clears throat> what I can say is this. Um, if you just simply watch the streams and watch the ads, I get credit for it, and that's how I can actually make some money doing it. Or on YouTube, actually on YouTube, it's just literally just watching my videos. A view is a view. So if you're watching my videos on YouTube, you're also supporting me. So I guess this is a good opportunity. Oh, wow, over 800 people on the stream. I'm surprised. I guess this is a good opportunity for me to thank personally everybody who has been supporting me, whether it's just recently since I started streaming on Twitch, whether it's on YouTube, whether you're a longtime fan and you've seen the evolution of my existence on the internet go from just some guy who's putting out some crappy quality videos on YouTube, dicking around, drinking, and playing games, to today where I'm actively live streaming, direct capturing full quality playthroughs of games in full HD and doing interactive vlog shows like this with the fans. I love it. I love where it's gone. And fingers crossed that I can keep doing this for the foreseeable future. I know there's a lot of changes coming up with YouTube with their stupid new one channel format and possible contract renegotiations coming again at the end of the year with Machinima and my Machinima partnership. There's a lot of concerns that I really have to juggle around and it is concerning because I want to keep doing this, but hopefully I will. And obviously I want to thank everyone who's been there along for the ride. Or even if you're a new viewer, thank you for being here and watching. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully in the future things will improve and uh, I can keep doing this. And maybe the bigger the better. You know what I mean? All right. So now we're going to take our first break. I believe I am out of time. I am out of time. I'm going to take our first break. I'll be back with part two of Ask the King, where I'm going to continue to answer your questions. This next one is going to be a doozy. You're not going to want to miss it, so don't go anywhere. I'll be back on Twitch in just a few short minutes or on YouTube. Go check out part two, which is going to be uploaded as a separate video. So thanks a lot, everyone. I'll be right back.